Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I'm going to try and fly around the world in a Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. It should be a pretty fast flight uh, given the fact that we're going to be covering a lot of distance. Note that I didn't say circumnavigation and that's mainly because I'm not entirely sure I'm going to cover exactly the distance that's technically required for circumnavigation. You have to cover at least the distance around the world at the equator and you also need to cross the equator at least once. Uh, so those things I'm not entirely sure I'm going to do. Um, part of the reason I'm doing this flight is to check out some scenery I got and so to enjoy the scenery and uh, as a result I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be going south of the equator just yet. Uh, someday, I mean I'm probably gonna make more than one circumnavigation flight but those will take a lot more time. Uh, also for slower ones I'll probably get uh, requests for me to fly by certain locations. This one's gonna be a lot faster and uh, we're going to be uh, flying over most things. Uh, though I will take the opportunity to do some sightseeing when possible and of course uh, at the locations where I wanted to check out the scenery. So it'll be my typical sort of interesting way of flying uh, planes in that I'm basically going to be flying it uh, VFR. And uh, it says match real world weather but for some reason, it's it's failing to download the weather. I hope it fixes that along the way. Well, we'll uh, periodically check and try and make sure it does. But for now, uh, considering we're taking off from Edwards Air Force Base, I am not expecting any severe weather there. It's a little bit hot there, I think, right now. But that's about it. Uh, as far as our fuel, we would like three and a half out well not three and a half hours um, three hours of fuel will do the trick and I'm going to oh ah I shouldn't be doing that one that's why it was weird should be doing this one keep it balanced uh yeah three and a half hours so yeah we are going to be flying to Cape Canaveral and I will make sure to I'm not going to have the entire video of the three and a half hours. That would be tedious for YouTube purposes. So I'm just going to uh, clip the parts where we're flying over something interesting. Okay, here we go. It looks like the dry lake bed. I have to confess that I didn't really practice with the SR-71 before starting out. So uh, hopefully I'm not too rusty. I hope this is right and there's not a scenery problem. I guess so. Alright, well, we definitely have enough runway space. Okay. Alright, here we go. Let's try and get to altitude quickly though. Because we know it's not very efficient down here on the ground. Or, you know, at low altitude. Let's take it from outside. Ooh. Well, the lake bed is a bit bouncy. And you thought the KSC runway was bumpy. In Kerbal, I mean. Okay, but I have to be careful not to stall this thing. Alright, so Edwards Air Force Base. As it looks in here, anyway. I guess we've got a highway to follow here. Let's just do that. Why not? So I'm going to be flying this manually the whole way. So that's one of the rules. So uh, there's not going to be any autopilot. I'm going to use elevator trim uh, to trim it. It's, uh, the elevator trim is actually on my hatch switch and so is the aileron trim. We're sort of just following this highway here. So uh, if I happen to fly over your town, make sure to tell me if you can recognize it from up here. We're at Mach 1.4 at uh, 37,000 feet and climbing. Okay, and looking at the sectional map here, 
uh, we can see that Arizona sort of begins here. You can tell uh, CA, the stuff for California, the airports and airstrips in California sort of end there and then Arizona takes over there and you can see the Colorado River there and so if we want to uh, see the Grand Canyon we need to go up there ah I think we can see Las Vegas is that Las Vegas yeah I believe so well let's swing by Las Vegas here I have buildings on the strip. There, it was downloadable scenery from the x 11 website. They've got a lot of custom building packs because there's a built-in scenery editor for x 11. It's easier to add stuff to it. And people do. And they've added a lot of... They're just building packs and then people build the scenery out of those building packs. Well, uh, you can see the International Airport. I think that's McCarran. And then up there is Nellis Air Force Base. So we're going from south to north here. Okay. We should be getting to better mock numbers now. Let me stabilize. We don't want to overstress the airframe. That happens at about uh, estimated uh, indicated airspeed of 800, 900-ish. Um, you can see some of the buildings there. There's the Las Vegas Strip. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I don't want to go up that fast, otherwise we're going to lose airspeed. Seems a bit hesitant, even though the frame rate is good. That's weird. Okay, time to make a right turn to check out the Grand Canyon. So yeah, on the map you can see there's this fork and then Lake Mead goes into this twisty bits the Grand Canyon here. You have to make sure not to get fooled by that bit though. Okay, now we're we're up to speed. Mach 2.6. Let's climb more. That's good. I didn't really hit the right altitude to accelerate with this the first time around. It takes a long time for the SR-71 to turn though. You don't want to force it. Not when we're going this speed. Mach 2.6 now. Fuel flow is very high right now. We need to get higher otherwise our efficiency is horrible. It's a big difference every 10,000 feet um, let's check out the fuel flow right now. We're at uh, 24,000 pounds per hour. So right now it's basically only one hour of fuel. And we're at 55,000 feet. I'm not going to change the throttle and we're going to try and maintain Mach 2.7 so you can judge from it. I think we're like going around the Grand Canyon instead of going towards it. Well, now we're at a mere 5,000 feet higher. We're at 60,000 feet and still around Mach 2.6, 2.7 and 18,000 pounds per hour. Let's see, what can we see with the Grand Canyon here? Ah, there we go. There is the Grand Canyon. Try and get over it. But I think at this point I'll just catch the tail end of it instead of the whole thing. Let's level out here. I want to coax it back up to more efficient situations. I'm not too sure which part of the Grand Canyon is the grander part of the Grand Canyon. Uh, I suppose I could check the map and see where the visitor center is. Oh, I'm decelerating a lot. Still above Mach 2, but let's flatten out a bit. So there you go, the Colorado River winding its way around, revealing millions of years, hundreds of millions of years of stuff that was long buried. 
So I'd actually start out a trip like this on during live streams. I crossed the country and crossed the Atlantic and actually got all the way to Moscow from Edwards Air Force Base. But dur during that I was reading from Catching the Fire by Michael Collins just as a side thing because during a live stream I can't do other stuff while the plane is flying. Uh, you know, I have to entertain people and so that's why I chose to do but I felt that that was dragging a bit. This will be a little bit better because I can cut out the long bits where we're not really doing stuff for you guys. So here we are at 66,000 feet and the fuel consumption is only about 10,000 pounds per hour. Though we're going a bit slower right now. So uh, hopefully we can get a little bit faster than that. Unfortunately with the photo scenery, once it ends, it ends, and so you can see the edge of the photo scenery here. Still the Grand Canyon there, and we're actually still right over parts of the, I think this is one of the branches off of the Colorado. But yeah, that's, that's what the stock X-Plane scenery looks like. Weird thing to say about this plane is sometimes it just doesn't want to accelerate. Even though you know it has it in it. Well, I tried to solve my AI issues, but clearly I still have an X-15 tailing me for some reason. And that's just how it is with X-Plane and AI aircraft. Well, I think this is why I should have practiced a little bit before starting out because I would have gotten a better sense of how to accelerate this thing. It's a little bit sloppy right now. I'm probably using more fuel than I should. It looks like the sweet spot's around 40 to 47 kilometers. Try and get to Mach 3 there. We're at Mach 2.6 and accelerating still. So if we go up just a little bit, it starts to slow down. Okay, so now a challenge for me. Let me try and maintain Mach 3 now that I've gotten it. But we really need to go higher. Right now we don't have an hour's worth of fuel. And that's not good. Even with the fact that we've, we're covering about 1,800 nautical miles per hour. Well, we're basically going straight east. Oh, I forgot we could just click on things and figure out what it is. We're over in New Mexico. Um, that's Santa Fe down there. Well, I had better get the whole range thing down here because otherwise crossing the Atlantic is going to be a lot hotter. I've done it before during a live stream, but still. That was a while ago. So I think we started out at 9.30 a.m. at Edwards Air Force Base. I uh, don't have a clock in here, but assuming it's uh, been one second of sim time for one second of real time, we're almost an hour into flight. Yeah, we're actually more over Colorado than over New Mexico. So we're way north of... Uh, I wanted to fly over Houston. Okay, we are turning south. Odd patch here where it's not getting data. I don't know why. That right there is Dalhart. Tukumkari. So we're basically flying between Dalhart and Tukumkari. Alright, I see that. Soda pointed at Amarillo. Whoa, lots of these things. Again, well, this is why I try and replace the stock scenery. It gets a little bit repetitive. I mean, I'm sure, you know, obviously farmland does tend to look repetitive, but not to this degree. It's a little bit more varied than this, usually.
Lubbock down there. So we're basically flying between Amarillo and Lubbock right now. And taking a look at what kind of vector that gives us. Uh, should be good. I mean, uh, we'll have Dallas to our left and Houston to our right. We're guy basically flying by those two big metropolitan areas. Hopefully we'll be in a good position to see them. Otherwise I'll have to do some more turning. Okay, uh, we should be headed towards a place called Dickens and this I believe is Guthrie. So that's Guthrie Vortac. Let's take a look outside. Still at Mach 3, uh, 65,000 feet descending a little bit to maintain Mach 3. Well, what can I say? So, I, I know you might have been wowed by the scenery before, but this is the stock scenery. Yep. Okay, I think that right there is Wichita Falls. Which is a bit north of Dallas, so Dallas should be around here somewhere off our map right now. Okay, Abilene is right there, just south of us right now. Well, it's been a long trip, but we're uh, finally halfway across Texas. <laughs> it's a big state. Okay, well, I think it's safe to say that that conglomeration of uh, airfields is Dallas. Yep. No question about that. Let's see if we can see it from outside, though. Uh, let me make sure that we're in a good position. Yep. I should have photo scenery coming up soon. No sight of it yet. Might be too far away. So unfortunately we're not really flying close enough to see the heart of Dallas, but we're sort of on the outskirts. Well, pretty distant. If we take a look here, what are we actually close to? This is Waco. Not close at all. Okay, I see the coastline. Yep. Let's take a look outside. Houston, folks. Welcome. I'm just arriving myself. So, let me take a closer look at where... Johnson Space Center would be Clear Lake. Let's see now. So we take a look at this island here, fairly distinctive. If you follow that down, that right there is Clear Lake. So there's this uh, tiny little inlet here, and then that there is Clear Lake. And Johnson Space Center is sort of on the inside uh, on the north side of it so right right here ish so I guess those buildings right there Johnson Space Center at uh, high velocity folks so th uh, this up here what we're passing over right now is Trinity Bay and then down here is Galveston Bay let's turn and follow the Gulf Coast ooh not too much and let's make sure we're maintaining our velocity properly and not descending to points where the fuel flow will be higher very complicated out here this is Port Arthur and the lake is Sabine Lake and that's on the border of uh, Texas and Louisiana. So Port Arthur is right here, and then that side is Louisiana. 
So Lake Charles is up there. And... Nothing I can make too much note of for now, but we're approaching New Orleans. And the Mississippi River Delta. Okay, right here it is Vermilion Bay, and that's Marsh Island. Probably appropriately named, though it looks a bit dry right now. Alright, there's a river whose name I can't quite pronounce. Atchafalaya. Atchafalaya River. And uh, it's got a yellow bayou that connects to this delta here. Or maybe that delta there. Actually, hmm, things seem to have changed since this map was created. Well, I guess that happens. I believe this is Morgan City. And we can uh, see the indications of the Mississippi River there. That's the Mississippi winding its way, and that means New Orleans is right around there. And the Mississippi River framing the edge of New Orleans here. It's really a tightly packed city when you take a look at it. We'll have to do a closer tour some other time. Okay, and then we'll continue following the Gulf Coast not long before Florida now. The Mississippi River though it's not so much a delta as much as it is a land construction enterprise. It's just gonna build itself a little little peninsula there. I believe we're passing by uh, Gulfport and Biloxi. Uh, this is Biloxi. Up ahead here, this is Mobile Bay, and that's Mobile, Alabama, right up there. So all this stuff is fairly close together. And by the time we get a little bit further away from Mobile, Alabama, we'll already be at Pensacola, Florida. Uh, the border between Alabama and Florida is just right there. Took no time to get past Mississippi here. But of course we're only catching the tiniest bit of Mississippi and Alabama at the Gulf Coast. Florida and Louisiana sort of impinge upon their main girth. And so we are here, Pensacola Bay and Pensacola, Florida. That's that city right there. And next to uh, Pensacola, out there is Eglin Air Force Base. Oh, we're at 74,000 feet. I didn't really want to go that high. It's more efficient, of course, but right now we're over Florida already, so it's not like we're pressed for efficiency. 
We don't want to go too high because otherwise we totally can't see anything. The plane is getting a little bit feistier. It's tending to want to go to higher altitudes. I think that's because the fuel load is less, so it's lighter. You can see our current vector and the omnipresent X-15. Seems like it's indicating some sort of wind. Hopefully that means it downloaded the weather. So we'll try and swing by Tampa Bay though. I, it doesn't look like we're going to get any closer. I mean, not that much close. Well, not as close as I wanted to get. Uh, we have to go further north though to hit Orlando and Cape Canaveral. So I don't want to go too far out of our way. Well, I guess we can. I mean, we, we need to burn off some steam here, some speed. So why not? It's only 300 miles here or there. Ooh, interesting clouds. I think it doesn't like rendering clouds at this high level. When I'm flying at this high level. Nice water, though. Alright, we need to turn towards Orlando now. Orlando is all the way up there, I think. So, definitely not the right heading here. Yep, so that's Orlando. We're going to have to make a... Whoop, no. A pretty sharp turn for that. And then there's Cape Canaveral. So we're way far south now. Think of it as a really big S-turn. And yes, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's amazing the degree to which... Florida is basically one big swamp of all these lakes in the middle of it. Okay, Orlando. Hold on, let me get that out of the way. So there's Orlando International Airport. Quite nice looking from up here. And yeah, Orlando is sort of built around all these lakes. <laughs> You see, I mean, even tiny little ones like that, little communities are all built around it. Definitely tough to make a grid with all these little guys. Even the airport, I mean, you can see the lakes in the middle there. Or ponds. Okay, well, there is Cape Canaveral, quite obvious. But we're still up flying very high, so we'll, we'll keep it up here for a little bit. But yeah, Orlando, pretty spread out, not a very tightly packed city. And then Cape Canaveral right there. Good look at both of them. I'm gonna go south first and then come up the coast, just to bleed off uh, altitude and velocity. I hope I don't have little homes on the launch pads. I wonder if I have um, autogen scenery enabled or disabled. Well, this is nominal to be populated as Cocoa Beach. And apparently a golf course right there. Definitely a golf course. Yeah, Autogen is on. So there might be... Ink. Well, there's definitely incorrect trees around some places. OK, 
Cape, Gav uh, Cape Canaveral Air Station, and this is a whole row of launch sites. Yeah, too many trees. So basically, across the country in two hours, we could have done it faster, but I had a slow start. So again, trick here, must not stall. Really need to make sure we do not stall. The velocity is going to go down pretty quickly, so I'm going to have to throttle up uh, at the right time. Frame rates are a little bit dodgy, considering. I really need to turn down the auto gen around here. Well, still hard to see out of this cockpit with that thing in the way. But uh, gear down. I don't think this has any flaps per se. Oh, we're still to one side. Uh, not that much, actually. That was that faked me out a little bit. We're still going very fast. Okay. Still very fast. Come on, bleed off speed without stalling me, okay? Well, if the shuttle can land here, the SR-71 definitely should be able to. Come on. Okay, brakes. It's all down. And shoots, hopefully, if necessary. Okay. Okay, I think we're safely down. We are on the runway and brakes off so we can taxi. All right, so cross country trip about two hours. I think uh, local time though, we're at 2.43 p.m. And I'm gonna park it and then take a break. Got to make sure not to blow any tires. Well, part of the nice thing is that the game didn't crash. That's that's a relief. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, that was a sharper turn than I thought it was going to be. Okay, we'll just park it right here. Come on. There we go. All right, so has it been doing the, no, that's not the right menu. The weather is what I'm interested in. Uh, it says last updated 14 minutes ago. Let's see if I can download it manually and whether it works or not. Okay, uh, it's updating the weather properly, so that's good. And so we are here. Um, no changes necessary. Uh, resume current flight. And I'll just need to fuel up after I take my break. So I'm just gonna, like, let's see, pause? Yeah, it is paused. So, uh, thank you for watching uh, this flight from uh, Edwards Air Force Base to Cape Canaveral. I'll do the next flight in a separate video. I hope you enjoyed watching the flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.